Of love of pages. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> it's and Jessica and Stephen. Uh, we're attempting to leave Stephen adequate uh, <laughs> silence time to edit the podcast. And I lost I'm track of Jessica's count- counting with my fingers <laughs> when you started. <laughs> Stephen, like, I don't know. It was fine. But we are on the third episode of Moonraker. <laughs> let's, let's pretend I had the cover up on mine. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to go through all these apps and stuff right now. Moonraker. <laughs> <So> <laughs> we have finished the book out. We did days Thursday and Friday for this. What, mm-hmm. what a Friday, man. <laughs> what a Friday. <laughs> Well, you guys' Fridays don't include this kind of stuff? No. Oh. I can't say that they normally do. I mean, Mitch's do, but, like, ours don't. <laughs> yeah, no, my, mine typically ends up being, like, pulling levers, knobs, and just generally trying to save the world. Yeah. yeah. Trying to keep nuclear warheads from blowing up London. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds right. So, before we get into that, because we're going to need these for this evening, Jessica, what is our topic <laughs> tonight? This is a sidecar. Ooh, what's a cute little lemon slice floating up? So it is. And Jessica's is more authentic because it's in the right glass. I know. Mine <laughs> is. Um, although I didn't shake it, I stirred it because I felt like, I don't know why. I was like, I'm going to stir this. My recipe said to shake it, but I was like, this feels better to be stirred. But yeah, whiskey, lemon juice, and orange liqueur. Whiskey? Interesting. Almond well, orange. yeah, mine oh, called for crown. Yeah. Well, I use Crown, so I don't have a cognac anyway, so that was going to be used anyway. So, I, 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 I did use cognac. Mm. It is quite delicious. I, I was out of control. Uh, you were out of you were out of what? Control. control. <laughs> That's like a pun. <laughs> out of control. It's like an orange liqueur. <laughs> Now they're drinking them for all the audio yeah, listeners. Just so you know, audio listeners. <laughs> they all tasted the, what, what's on the rim there? Is it just salt? Sugar. sugar. Okay, sugar. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> a sugar rim. Got a little lemon float in for design because I felt like that looked retro to me. So. Well, okay. it's a classic 1950s drink. I think we were debating between this and a Tom Collins. We'll have to find an excuse to make a Tom Collins. I I do love Tom Collins. So, yeah. If you guys just want to slip that in on the next book, that's totally okay. (laughs) I don't know how to fix that up that'll fit with that one. There's there's a character named Tom in here somewhere. We know it. We'll just go ahead and make Tom Collins. (laughs) Uh, For my side of things, I I want to recommend and remind people, drink water. (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah. Do that. Do that. <laughs> I can't tell this is water, but you can trust me. This is water and not vodka. If for anyone who saw the the behind the scenes one before, where Jess's mom found out that she was an alcoholic, we all know it's <laughs> not, not, not water in there. <laughs> it is water. I promise. I drink more than half a gallon of water a day. Thank you very she, much. She Irished up her water. <laughs> Never. That would Finally just be Irish up my coffee. <laughs> I was gonna say, that would just be a sin to the Jameson. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like the idea of just being watered down with alcohol. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Actually, what my dad's drink, like go to to drink nowadays, not that he drinks a lot, is a whiskey water. So <laughs> it's Mitch's too, because he can't have any carbonation, but yeah. I think I saw it. It's not too bad, and it's a bit better. Like, if you're really wanting to save money and do a cheaper whiskey, that <laughs> makes it better. <laughs> Dilutes out the pain for a bit. <laughs> oh, goodness. But yes, so our sidecars for the evening. 
Mm. But I guess now that we're done, I want to ask everybody, how do we feel about James Bond novels? I, yeah, no, <laughs> just to make it a face and I agree. They're, they're extra medium, super five out of 10. Um, yeah. The one thing I was shocked about is how true they were to the parodies of them. Uh, it's not that, I, that, not that I hated it, but I did not love it either. I liked it more than I expected to, but mm-hmm. the part where it was like almost exactly kind of the ideas of uh, the bad guy telling his whole plan kind of thing. <laughs> and then like, t- like James Bond gets captured and everything. That's yeah. on the nose. Everyone parodied this perfectly to prepare me for this. It was, it was great. Trax is just like, all right, sit back. Let me tell you a tale as you're tied with copper wire to the chair. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you my whole story and why I want to destroy everybody in London. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We, all right. Dude. Because, he got bullied and he was mad about it, right? We can all agree this is a product of bullying. Yes, that is definitely the takeaway here is don't bully people or you turn them into body villains. <laughs> he was a Nazi for <laughs> Well, except the bullying turned him into a Nazi, then turned him into a Bond villain. Yeah, okay. So this is the Adolf <laughs> Hitler version of a Bond villain. <laughs> I mean, bullying. honestly, that, that, that's pretty par for the course for a Nazi, it sounds like. They get yeah, real, like, just... real grumpy about one tiny slight when they were younger. You'll never be an artist. You suck. <laughs> it's true. Mein Kampf is written like absolutely terribly guys it's loosely strung together terrible sentences yep Guy you know i team. was told i would never be a athlete you don't see me going and starting a cultural revolution that ends up killing a bunch of people yeah yeah <laughs> we've all been right? told that <laughs> Now this is the part that they play on the <laughs> on the news programs when you do go start a cultural revolution killing people. Look, see, she said she wouldn't do it, <laughs> but she did. <laughs> nope, nope. Here's my proof that I am not doing it mm, for now. Mm, I don't know. You're too much of a lawyer for me to trust in you. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that always what we come back to? <laughs> <laughs> For, so for this one, how did you like? How did you, a person who was definitely more well versed in James Bond things, enjoy this mm-hmm. book? So I enjoyed this much better than Doctor No, like by leaps and bounds. Okay. I would completely agree with you that this is a perfectly average action detective book. Like it is, it is the quintessential standard detective book. I liked it. But I liked it for what it was. It is mm-hmm. not, I wouldn't ever look at somebody and go, this is a literary masterpiece. <laughs> like, I'm not going to make any of those claims. I wouldn't even make claims that James Bond movies are particularly cinematic masterpieces. No. I really like them for what they are. They're just mm-hmm. fun to watch. <laughs> they're just, they're fun spy movies. Fun spy novels. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, while still very much a product of its time, aged much better than Dr. No did. Mm. Oh. Mm. So, because there's, while there's still definitely the sexism involved, it's much softer sexism. Mm-hmm. There's much more, un- it's much more undertoned than... I think some of the other novels and movies are. So it's aged better. It, however, nowhere near the movie. Like, you don't even have the same characters in the movie. You don't have the same location as the movie. Wait, is it really not the same location? No, Moonraker takes place in space. Well, not the whole time, not though. Not the whole time, but like... <laughs> They Didn't it start in London? It start well, yeah, it starts in Dover. But yeah. then they go to space. <laughs> what? Yeah. 
I'm shocked. I, I, I went, I, I read up on the background of this one. I, we haven't done any kind of like plot stuff for this one, but is yeah. it super necessary? Do you think? I mean, I don't know. I mean, we, we did some of the plot in the first two and I'll do the broad brush jokes of the plot eventually when we get there. Okay. Do, do you want to do that part happens. first? Cause sure. I'm going to go on a whole thing otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> so Thursday, we left off the end of Wednesday night. There was a table set for three. They tried to dump the cliff onto Bond and Gala. Gala. So I still don't know why they haven't figured out that Drax is the bad guy, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. It's not okay. Um, <laughs> I've decided to accept it because it's not the hill I want to die on today. I die on a different hill every day. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so they wake up Thursday morning. Everybody's going to be going to London. Bond and Gala have plans to meet at 630 for dinner. Mm-hmm. Gala is going to go with Drax and Krebs to his appointments with the ministry in London. Bond is going to go update Valance and M on everything that's going on. Gala decides finally that she's going to try and pickpocket Drax to get that little black book. I still don't know why it took her this long to do that, but that's okay. (laughs) Um, Everything's fine. Everything is fine. So she manages to pull it out perfectly fine, get into the bathroom stall, tear out a page, figure out what's going on. She finally puts two and two together because she's smart. When she's given all the information, she can... she clearly comes upon it very quickly. Mm-hmm. When she's trying to put the little black book back, Krebs catches her. Drax yeah. hits her very hard. He and Krebs knock her out. She wakes up in the middle of London in some sort of warehouse tied to a chair. We learn later on that Krebs attempts to torture her. They Thankfully, left most of that information out. Um, But she passes out from the pain before she tells him anything. Mm -hmm. Bond updates Valance, and M goes to wait for Gala at dinner. She never shows. He calls Valance. Valance is worried because she never showed to his meeting with him, her her meeting with Valance. And so he asks Bond to handle it because he doesn't want to expose her or potentially risk her because nobody knows what's going on. Maybe something else just happened. Bond discovers that Drax is at the Blades having dinner. He made his appointment, but not with Gala. He then follows Drax back to the warehouse where they're stashing Gala. He watches Creeps put her in the car, cover her with a blanket. There is then a chase. The typical James Bond car chase mm-hmm. down winding curvy roads. Drax sets it up so that Krebs, well, one, Drax kills just another random driver who was just thinking this was a fun sports car race because <laughs> who doesn't? <laughs> Bond villain. Um, and then Krebs slices open uh, stacks of newspapers on essentially a semi truck. And they go flying out the back and they destroy Bond's car. He runs, he gets run off the road. Drax and Kreebs grab him. They take them both back to the Moonraker launch site, tie them to chairs with copper wires. And Kreebs threatens to use a blowtorch on them, but Bond just gives him the information that they're looking for anyway. Because like, what's the point? Yeah. What's the point? Krebs is then excused from the room, much to Krebs' chagrin. Drax does the whole Bond villain speech about how his mother was English and his father was German and he was a <laughs> German duke and he went to English boarding school and he was bullied. And because he was bullied, he went back to Germany and joined the Nazi party. And then he was in Nazi espionage in the SS and then through circumstance, he ends up captured by the English, but the English think that he's one of them because of his fake uniforms. And then he starts to build a plan to set off the Moonraker as a nuclear bomb 
in the middle of London. He got the warhead from the Russians. The Russians are going to rescue him by submarine after the launch. I feel like he could have used his position to do this in different ways. Right. But I, I yeah. feel like his whole thing. And then I left. They were mad. They was they were mean to me. <laughs> yeah. I was, like, people aren't nice. No. <laughs> Why are they mean to me? I'm up. And a bunch of other Which, people. It's kind of the eternal call of the the people who would have aligned themselves with Hitler though. Like, yeah. like they were they were mean to me and then I'm gonna kill them. <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah. there's a lot of toxic masculinity going on. But mm. then Drax leaves because he's going to have Bond and Gala. He's going to open his office door and basically incinerate them from the launch site. Bond then starts the blowtorch again and gets their copper wires melted away so that they're free. And I then just come up with a plan. Bond's initial plan is to just light the thing on fire now, blow it up in the silo, melt it down because the nuclear warhead won't go off if it doesn't impact mm. and basically stop it from there, but it'll kill him. Gall is like, um, how about we just, you know, recalibrate it back to where it was supposed to be in the North Sea where nobody else will get hurt? <laughs> like, Maybe we could just, you know, save the day and not die. <laughs> and we still have the rocket. We still have the rocket. Yeah. And we can still use the technology. So Bond says, okay. So then they set up the elaborate stuff. Drax discovers that they're gone. He tries to use the steam hose to basically burn them out of the ventilation shaft that they're in. Because he doesn't know which one they might be in, but he thinks they're in one of them. They withstand it. Drax goes out. He makes this ridiculous kind of convoluted speech to the British press. He inform he had previously informed Bond and Gala that he had given his lawyers an envelope with all of the information and the evil plot to be released <laughs> as soon as a successful launch had occurred. Luckily, lawyers are slow and Bond is faster. We'll get to that. Um <laughs> <laughs> Gala and Bond are able to successfully redirect it to launch into the North Sea. The submarine that uh, Drax and all of the German scientists get on is heading that direction because it thinks it's going the opposite direction of the bomb. Turns out they're going the same direction and they end up blowing themselves up. Yay. The British government goes, we're going to cover this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Because we don't want to admit the fact that, one, a German a Nazi duped us into letting him almost set off a nuclear warhead in London. Two, that the Russians assisted both in the bringing of the nuclear warhead and the escape plan. And three, we kind of want to keep the Russian sub and the Russian nuclear warhead because be good for study. <laughs> it's like... Like, these, these are ours. We earned it. <laughs> <laughs> we earned it with 200 lives. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and then they instruct that Bond and Gala are to go anywhere in the world but England for the next month just for everything to cool down. And luckily, the ministry was able to get two Drax's attorneys before they released the statement that was in the envelope. I have a bit of a problem with the way they characterize this because I don't think that's how it actually would have gone down, but that's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Bond finds out after planning this romantic month-long getaway in his head with Gala that she is in fact actually engaged. The engagement ring was not fake and she plans to marry her fiance tomorrow on Saturday before they leave to go be somewhere not in England for a month. I wonder if that last part at the time was like the biggest plot turn. Like, wait, like, was, there's not a Bond girl? <laughs> yeah. Like was, it, like, was that the super unexpected thing? Like, oh, uh -huh. That know. would be my guess, yeah. Um, for this one, there's you the guys said 
you guys said that the movie is very different from this. Mm -hmm. I could not be more shocked by this because the way that this whole book came to be was that he apparently had uh, well first he, he has an obsession with this big um like royal card game thing that happened in 1895 i think it was mm -hmm. um this big old scam thing that happened <clears throat> and when he met one of the survivors uh, like a person who had been there for this survivor um a person who had witnessed this um he questioned her with such intensity that she cried <laughs> Wow. <laughs> to find out more about this. So he like he essentially took this one idea that he had for a movie, specifically trying to make a thing that would be more interesting with its settings. Mm -hmm. Um, and then this other idea that he had and had to like take these two juxtaposed things and kind of like shove them into the same story. So mm -hmm. The fact that the movie is nothing like the book that started off as a, a film idea that he had nursed for years is crazy. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't happen in the same setting, apparently. <laughs> like, what? Kind of. Kind of. He, got, he got none of the things. <laughs> and they put a man with metal teeth in it. Yep. I mean, that's the best yeah, part of the movie. Man with metal teeth. The American Marines are added in. Because that's the other thing. The Marines are the ones who actually stop Drax's space shuttle. Really? Not, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he and Galia's, the character that's Gala, is named Goodyear. Goodyear? The name was just too, it was too big of a bridge to cross, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> he and Bond disable the cloaking radar with the help of Jaws. And so the Marines board the shuttle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember now. Oh, it's so great. I mean, and it takes place in Venice and the Amazon because there's at one point Bond gets poisoned with some toxins and he discovers they're from this specific space place in the Amazon that Drax is yeah, like none of this. Very, <laughs> it's very. The original yeah. book happened over like just a few days. The book oh. and the movie are vastly, oh, vastly different. different vastly different there is that i okay so i'm probably the only one who watches murder she wrote on this no podcast. what are you talking about no i own okay. seasons of this on dvd it's been Perfect. a while okay so, <laughs> this is how this is how i'm going to relate it to you steven do you remember the episode in murder she wrote where she goes to hollywood because the film studio that bought her book rights uh -huh. really had made something that was not anything like her actual yeah. book just bought it because they wanted the name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would agree. <laughs> like, just, the, the movie and the book, the only thing that they took from the book into the movie was the fact that there was Bond and the name of the villain. <laughs> that was Crazy. It. They came out with a movie that people didn't like very much. Right? But, yeah. yeah. And there was no mustaches with bald heads which i thought was a very interesting like thing and i almost, nobody like, recognized like, that. like i almost because like, i always was like Ugh. people say you know how could clark can't like put on glasses and not be recognized i'm like out of context you add glasses and change a hairdo like yeah no, do you, okay I, the one that that i use for this now is when zoe deschanel doesn't have glasses or bangs because honestly oh, yeah. i do like not recognize that person. human whole different person yeah whole different person. and so i'm like i'm like who huh, i wonder if you shaved your head and won't grow a mustache and then shave the mustache off like yeah i yeah. bet you pretty different like i bet you would be pretty unrecognizable especially give it a couple months when you start to grow your hair back like yeah that's true that's yeah true. i could buy that i could buy that but just yeah. as a person who who writes how would you feel if this was done to you? <laughs> Besides How the fat paycheck, money you got. do I make? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know because it actually would be good for me nowadays because I'd get more people buying my book irregardless, and then I'd get the people talking about how different it was and stuff like that, and ragging on mm -hmm. the movie a lot more than they would ragging on my book. So it's kind of more beneficial to me. 
in a way. Okay. I would hope to have my vision done. I would hope to be at least a scriptwriter involved. Mm-hmm. But if I'm not and they go completely offhand and just use my characters, it's just Hollywood's fan fiction. Like it's why not go for it? I sold you the rights. You know, I might, I, I there might be like, a few things like stipulations. I'll probably be like, you can't do this though. Like you can't do this. I feel like this one was like, well, it's called Moonraker. Why is it called Moonraker? I don't know. Cause he's trying to, you know, it's a rocket, but it's going to blow up London. Well, what if we just have a spaceport by the moon, like a Moonraker? <laughs> I do. I can't imagine that conversation. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Let me get this straight. The movie's called Moonraker, and there's no moon in it. There's no moon. What the? Why did you all of a sudden become Austin Powers? <laughs> huh? Well, no, I, I was going for a shitty accent for that one. I could do a better British accent. Anyone who's listening and looking for a voice in something that wasn't my British accent, okay? Please, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, no. I, the one bone I have to pick is they're like, well, we were able to get to the solicitors, which is attorneys for, for Britain that aren't barristers. They're, Britain's got a weird differential for attorneys. But cool. we got to them before they were they were able to release it. And I'm like, I'm sorry. There is not an attorney on the planet that wouldn't at least read what their client had asked them to publish. And if <laughs> I read that, I would definitely hold off taking it to publication. I'd be like, we're going to sit on this a day or two, kind of see what everybody else is feeling out there. Then we'll figure out if we need to publish it. Like, (laughs) Uh definitely not going to do this immediately. Like, definitely going to see if the government has any interest in keeping this. (laughs) Is there any chance that Ian Fleming had recently had a bad, like, (laughs) rough situation (laughs) with yeah, and so he's like, they never read the things you give them. <laughs> I mean, anything is quite possible, but you know, they, anything anything is possible. As I often tell my clients, anything is possible. Very few things are probable. Um, <laughs> my guess is it just added to the suspense, mm. and he needed in a way to explain how Drax. Since Drax was choosing to tell Bond and Galia his entire scheme, yeah, he probably felt the need to be like, well, this type of character would want the world to know. And so how do I make it such that the world would know while he's hiding out in Russia? Give it to somebody who's not going to open it, who is sworn to confidentiality and fiduciary obligations and all those other things. <laughs> Would fiduciary obligations cover a person doing these things? Like, I understand you have to make the money for your client, but goodness. If I had read this, so here's here's the interesting piece. If I know that you are going to commit a criminal act, uh-huh. I know, and I can't talk you out of it, mm-hmm. then I have obligations to the court to notify. Okay. Okay, so you can't you can't start being like, okay, so I'm gonna rob a bank. How do I get out of it? Like you can't <laughs> can't do that to me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because there's definitely ethical issues and conflicts of interest and all of those things. Um, what I don't know, I'm not required to disclose. So if mm-hmm. you hand me a piece of paper and tell me don't open this, I'm not gonna open it. Honest to God. Just like I will never ask client, like, did you do this? Did yeah, but did you? <laughs> you don't, you don't as an attorney, you don't ask that question because you don't want to know. If I know you committed the crime, <laughs> I can't let you testify. It's just, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So, like, you just don't ask the question. If mm-hmm. one of your clients hands you a piece of paper and says, don't open this till after the successful launch of the Moonraker, I'll be like, okay, it goes in the vault file and it stays. And after the successful launch, it comes out. I open it. I read it. I go, oh, just well, oh, damn a problem. <laughs> I mm. probably should have opened this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I didn't open this. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it here. I promise to publish it. We will publish it if we need to. But I'm gonna give the government a day or two to just decide what they want. 
with this. Can get some lead time. <laughs> gonna get, we're gonna give a little lead time because <laughs> this is a little. This is a little lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't necessarily want my firm's name attached to this publication. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, then you start, and then you start going, now, which newspaper do I throw this desk on? Like, who do I dislike? <laughs> or who do you like, depending. Yeah. Depend- depending on how things went. Or, I mean, who's left also. <laughs> if <laughs> After a bomb goes off. It does change things. This is very true. This is very true. But yeah, I was just, that one, I was like, that one. no, I'm sorry. The ministry didn't manage to get there in time. Like the solicitors definitely like opened that up at 12.05 and we're like, it can get published in three days. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. All in all, are you guys happy that you read this? Yeah. Okay, you guys were pensive for a second there. It, it took I just, a moment. I, like, I could have lived my life without reading it. <laughs> but, like, I don't regret reading it. So it's like... <laughs> it's yeah. Jessica's yeah. on. Jessica hit it on the head. Yeah. How about you, Stephen? Uh, no, I'm fine with having read this one. D- like, each time that I had to approach going back in, to taking in more of the book, I was like, oh man, it's gonna be time I'm losing right now. And then during it, every single time, I was like, no, why was I being grumpy about this? Like, I like this. It's fine. It's fine. <clears throat> so yeah. it, it, it definitely continuously was better than I thought it was going yeah. to be. Okay. It was. I, I will openly say Bond should be dead. They should be dead. <laughs> there were several times where Bond should have died. Just, you should be dead right now. Mm. He, he has manliness and just, pure gumption to keep I'm him alive. I'm just going to breathe through getting steamed alive right now. Just going just gonna... to... <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no. If you got blisters on your legs, it's third degree burns. No, no, no. No. Actually, first. First degree burns. Um, no, Still. that's not something you just walk away from. Oh, and then they put water on it. Oh, like just, I was like, no, this would hurt so much. Your legs would get so stiff. You wouldn't be able, no, like none of this would have happened. I'd like, just, oh, this is not how burns work. Again, manliness and pure gumption. James Bond. It's James Bond. It's what happens when you're fighting for the good guys. Mm hmm. Wait, does James Bond have a middle name by any chance? I don't think so. I don't think it, James Bond is a real name Robert anyway. I'll oh. take that. Yeah. And I just I want I want him to have a middle name, you know? Like like Tiberius, like Captain Kirk, you know? James like Tiberius Kirk. Bond. <laughs> it would definitely be something like Michael or Matthew. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's basically a desk worker. <laughs> like it, despite everything else, he's a salary man. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. Oh, it's revealed on Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Apparently, oh, Ooh, what is it? Herbert, I think. What? I think that's <laughs> what it's saying. Okay, Joe. Uh, what? Uh, what? What were the ones you said, Michael? James Bond' real name is. Revealed only once in the entire canon in On Her Majesty's Secret Service, Bond is being held in a raffia work cage suspended over a pool of piranha fish. I hate what? this movie. While the villain, Dr. Peevish, taunts him by saying, Herbert, 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 over and over again. And that one was, yeah, I think his real name was revealed because that's the one where he got married. Oh yeah! Wow, yeah. It's it's considered that one is considered the worst Bond film ever made, and it it's really bad. It's huh. really bad. Well, all right, we learn something new every day. <laughs> James <Yeah>. Herbert Bond. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I don't know. At this point, should I introduce uh, 
the next book or do you guys have anything else to say? No, you should definitely introduce the next book. I okay. I'm going I'm to introduce um, also the other ones that were possible in the books as well. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't ah, want, yes. I, I don't know how to summarize the upcoming book without giving away a whole lot. So. Okay. <laughs> And yes, I did just reach behind me in general for books. Oh, no. Books fell off. Okay, oh, so, that's the worst. Uh, to the people who are just listening to this one, I'm going to be holding up all of these covers. Because I like all of these covers pretty universally. But you're just listening. So you'll hear papers rustling. Yeah. Um, so one of the books that I thought was one of the chances for this one, but immediately got ruled out because I still to this day haven't finished it because it's just a, a dense book. It, it, they, they like to gild all of the lilies in this one um, is yeah. a book called uh, the wind up girl by Paolo Basigalupi mm -hmm. <clears throat> is the best way that I've figured to say that last name. I've never checked that against anything, but that's my I, guess right now. I mean, that's how, what, what I'd go with. So yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was one of them. And I 100% absolutely just bought this book based on the cover in like 2009. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. To like 2016. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, and then another one was Ancillary Justice by Anne Lecky. Lecky. Uh, and that one's still possible to pop up at some point in time in the future for my choices. Mm -hmm. And I haven't finished that one either. And then a book that I finished years ago that was uh, lent to me by a friend of mine uh, named Ty, who is a sweetheart and gave me some very good books. We traded books a lot. Uh, this is The the Forever War by Joe Haldeman. Um, this book, it's, it's kind of breaking down the idea of the changing tides of so like society and the views on war um, over mm. time all inside of a sci-fi kind of setting. It's an interesting piece. I'm looking forward to reading it with you guys. All right. <clears throat> I'm so, excited. Yeah. So you guys have, for everyone out there who has made it to this point and is trying to get a book with us, um, we're do doing the same thing that we always do. After this one comes out, there will be one week where nothing is released. And mm -hmm. then the week after that, we'll start up again. That one week in there is just for you to be able to like get up the scratch to be able to go buy the book or find it on whatever service you would use. Yeah. So please join us for Forever War in two weeks. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Okay. Well, with that, Stephen, where can people find you to discuss trading new books? You can find me across the internet as Peppermint Gentleman. Um, the easiest place to find me to find everything else that I do and where to find me is my website, peppermintgentleman.com. Jessica, where can people find you to recommend for your new podcast? <laughs> All right. Well, yes. VR gems. Yeah. VR gems. So where I can know. you recommend VHS. VR gems? V VHS yes. gems. VHS gems. Okay. It, was like a, it, was like, it was an auditory typo. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like yes, it. Yes, yes. John and I of Geeks Watch are going to be starting a new podcast soon called VHS Gems, in which we're going to be watching all the wonderful, lovely movies of your childhood that came out on VHS. So it's going to be fun. <laughs> if you want to get on in on the ground floor and recommend new, yes, podcasts, please. new movies to Jessica from your VHS collection, Jessica, where can they yeah. find you? Go ahead and tweet it at me. I'm on Twitter as JM Bailey Writes. And you can find me with the rest of Geek Elite Media at geekelitemedia.com, our fa Facebook page, forward slash Geek Elite Media. Archived episodes of this podcast and other podcasts can be found at geekelitemedia.com. But until next time, this is the love of pages, reminding you to keep turning those pages and always remember to geek, geek out. out.